Hello friends I am Shagnik and I welcome you all to online learning today we are going to discuss the ratio and proportion concept first followed by percentage then hcf and lcm concept and at last but not the least the problem on ages concepts and also the questions so let us start by ratio and proportion so let us first know the important concepts that are required to solve the ratio and proportion questions okay the mean proportion between a and b is root of ab that is root of ab will be the mean proportion between a and b if a is to b proportionate b is to c then c is called the third proportional to a and b and is given by c is equal to b square by a okay if a is to b proportionate c is to d then d is called the fourth proportional to a b and c and is given by d is equal to b c divided by a the duplicate ratio many a times question can ask what is the duplicate ratio of a is to b so that is a square is to b square and what is the triplicate ratio of a is to b a cube is to b cube if they say sub duplicate if they say sub duplicate then it is root over of a by root over of b and sub triplicate then it is cube root of a by cube root of b okay remember this if a quantity p is distributed in the ratio a is to b is to c then first part would be p into a by a plus b plus c second part would be p into b by a plus b plus c and third part would be p into c by a plus b plus c now you will come to know more details about this concept when we will solve the questions so let us move to the questions okay find the third proportion of 18 and 54 even if you don't remember the formulas you can do this by your own logic the third proportion of 18 and 54 we can write this like this 18 by 54 is equal to 54 by c okay then we have to find the c c would be 54 into 54 by 18 then 18 3 is a 54 and 54 3 is a 162 so this is your answer now find the fourth proportion of 19 13 and 153 we can write this like this 9 by 13 is equal to 153 by d so d would be D is equal one fifty three into thirteen by nine. So nine one seventeen za is one fifty three, and seventeen into thirteen is two twenty one. So two twenty one will be your answer. Then if you have to find the mean proportion of seven and sixty three, we can write this like this: seven by b is equal to b by sixty three. Okay, then. B square is equal to root of seven into sixty-three. We can multiply this, or we can divide sixty-three as nine into seven into seven is already present. So nine can be divided as broken as three into three, seven into seven like this. So this two will be vanished. Three and seven will come outside. So Twenty-one will be your answer. You can also do this by multiplication. I have just shown shown you, even without multiplication and finding the root, you can easily find like this. Okay, okay. A sum of rupees two three nine two is divided among a, b, and c in the ratio of one is to two, one is to three, one is to four. Who gained most of the money and how much gained? Okay, as they are in fraction, it is always beneficial. To convert it into whole number, we can do this by fraction also, like two three nine two into one by two by one by two plus one by three plus one by four. We can also do it like this, but it will become complex. So rather doing that, we will divide it. Okay, like we will transfer into whole numbers. So to transferring it into whole numbers, we have to Take a common LCM. So LCM of two, three, four would be twelve, right? So half into twelve would be six. One by three into twelve would be four. 
1 by 4 and 12 would be 3. So the ratio would be 6 is to 4 is to 3. So who gained the most of the money? As 6 is the highest, so A should gain most of the money. And how much gained? For this, we will write 2392 into 6 by total. Total is 6 plus 4, 10 plus 3, 13. So 13 divided by 2392 is 184. You can calculate this by your calculator. So 184 into 6 is rupees 1104. Hope you have understood. Now let us move to the next questions. Okay. Okay. It is a very important question. And I think uh, and this is also the previous year question. Okay. Very, very important question. Rupees 8,400 8, is divided among A, B, C and D in such a way that she that the shares of a and b b and c and c and d are in the ratio 2 is to 3 4 is to 5 6 is to 7 respectively the share of a is let us first find a is to b is to c is to d how to find this uh, the ratio given are 2 is 2 by 3 4 by 5 and 6 by 7 so there is a trick a's value would be the multiplication of all of the numerators that is 2 into 4 into 6 okay b's value would be b's value would be the first one that is a denominator 3 then 4 into 6 it will glow like this 3 4 6 so first denominator and other two's numerator okay c would be first two denominators then one numerator that is 3 into 5 into 6 and d would be all the denominators that is 3 into 5 into 7 so a would be all the numerators d would be all the denominators b would be the first denominator and other two numerator and c would be the both denominator and the last one as a uh, numerator okay if we solve this we will find this as 48 is to uh, 24 no 48 is to 72 this would be 72 this would be 6 into 5 13 to 390 and this would be 7 5 35 into 3 that would be 105 so we can break it okay we can break it by uh, dividing by 3 so by dividing by 3 it would be 16 it would be uh, 24 then we will get 90 as 30 then 35 right now uh, the share of a we can easily find the share of a share of a would be 8400 into 16 by the total that is 16 plus 24 plus 30 plus 35 okay so 16 plus 24 plus 30 plus 35 would be 105 and 105 by 8400 would be 80 to 80 into 16 your answer would be 1280 to remember this how to find you can remember this diagram that is first this last is this then then this then this and like this then other is this and like this if you remember this diagram it would be easy to understand or to remember okay now this is a very very important question and it has appeared in several exams many a time so we have to uh, just focus on this question it is a very important question okay it is given there is a sum of rupees 180 consisting of rupees 1 50 pesos and 25 pesos coins in the ratio 2 is to 3 is to 4 in a box what is the value of 50 pesos coin so rupees 1 into this ratio if we multiply all then we will get 180 right so we can multiply like this 1 into 2x consider ratio as x plus 0 0.50 into 3x plus 0 0.25 into 4x would be 180 right because combination of number of coins and the value would be the total sum if we take x as common then it would be 2 
plus 1.5 plus 1 x is equal to 180 so that would be x is equal to 3 by 4.5 180 by 4.5 so x would be 180 if you divide by 4.5 it will come as 40 so what is the value of 50 paisa coins it would be 0 0.50 into 3x x is 40 so 0 0.50 into 120 it would come as rupees 60 your answer would be like this okay this is all from the ratio and proportion hope you have understand understood it and we will come up with more such questions of ratio and proportion rather we will share you questions for practice okay hope you have understood now let us move to the next topic that is percentage in percentage there is no such concept as such but there are some concepts and i will tell you while solving the questions okay uh, so let us move to the first question if in an examination the marks obtained by a is 20 percent less than that of b then marks obtained by b is how much percent more than obtained by a okay uh, so a is 20 percent less than that of b so let us consider b as 100 okay so a is 20 percent less so a must be 80 then marks obtained by me is how much percent more than that obtained by a so the difference is 20 we have to consider it is given more than obtained by a so a should be numerator because we have to consider how much greater than a and we have to find the percent so 100 20 by 18 to 100 so 4 it would be 5 5 5 so it would be 25 percent more okay hope you have understood very easy one now the price of apple is increased by 10 percent then decreased by 10 percent what is the change in price so there is a formula to this type of question a plus b plus a b by 100 okay so the price is first increased to 10 then decrease so there will be a minus sign minus 10 then multiply of 10 into 10 so it will be minus 100 by 100 so both will cut it would become minus 1 so there would be a loss of 1 percent or change in 1 percent for example if the price is 100 now it would become 99 if the price is 200 it would become 198 like this way okay so it would reduce by reduce by one percent that would be your answer now a scores 10 percent and fails by 30 marks b scores 40 percent marks and get 30 marks more than the minimum marks needed to pass the exam what is the maximum mark for the exam so for shortcut to solve this type of question is to find the difference okay a scored 10 percent okay and b scores 40 percent so difference between the percentage is 30 percent right and fails by 30 marks and other one gets 30 per marks more so the difference between them is 60 right because from a particular point it is 30 marks less and from a particular point it is 30 marks more so the difference between is 30 60 so 30 percent is equal to 60 so 1 percent is equal to 2 so 100 percent should be equal to 200 so the total marks is 200 marks easy so whenever this type of question the there is a difference in marks also and difference in percentage also the difference is there is a difference in value also and the difference is uh, percentage also then we can subtract and then we will equate and we can easily find the total marks okay now let us move to the next question it is also a very important question and a common question if the price of sugar is increased by 25 percent then how much person should a person reduce his consumption of sugar so that his expenditure remains the same so suppose the initial price is 100 it has increased 25 percent so the price would become 125 so we have to find out how much percent of 125 is 100 if we can find it so we have to then reduce that amount so that the expenditure remains same 
सो हाउ मच परसेंट ऑफ वन ट्वेंटी फाइव इज हंड्रेड लेट एस फाइंड एक्स देन इट वुड बी हंड्रेड इन टू हंड्रेड बाय वन ट्वेंटी फाइव इट वुड बी फाइव टू बी फोर फाइव फोर ज ट्वेंटी अगेन फाइव फोर ज ट्वेंटी सो एट्टी परसेंट सो हंड्रेड इज एट्टी परसेंट ऑफ वन ट्वेंटी फाइव सो द पर्सन हैज टू रिड्यूस हिज कंजम्पन बाय ट्वेंटी परसेंट सो दैट द एक्सपेंडिचर रिमेन्स द सेम ओके अंडरस्टूड ओके नाउ लेट अस मूव टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन इलेक्शन ऑफ टू कैंडिडेट्स ए गॉट फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ वोट्स एंड लॉस बाई थाउजेंड वोट्स वॉट इज द टोटल वोट सो इफ ए गॉट फोर्टी परसेंट बी मस्ट हैव गॉट सिक्सटी परसेंट राइट सो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दैम इज परसेंटेज इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट and the difference between the votes is 1000 so if 20 is 1000 one should be 1000 by 20 100% would be 1000 by 20 into 100 so it would be 1 5 so the total vote would be 5000 easy and it is again a previous year question and a very important question this question can come you in the advanced portion advanced Uh, numerical advanced portion you can receive or you can see this type of question so let us see what the question demands by 20% decrease in price of rice okay people can buy 10 kg more rice in rupees 100 what is the original price of 1 kg rice so let us consider pr uh, original price as p and consider a as the total amount the initially the person can buy uh, in rupees 100 rupees so there is a decrease in 20% so if the total amount is 100 and the decrease in is 20% then it would now become 80% so 80 by 100 when the price becomes 80 by 100 they can buy 10 kg more a plus 10 which would be equal to uh, the original price and the original amount of rice they can buy right because the value would be both be 100 so it would be similar we can equate it now it would become 0.8p into a plus 10 it would be p into a right so we can remove p and if we solve this uh 0.8a 0.8a Plus zero point eight into ten, it would become eight is equal to a. So zero point two a would become eight. So a would become eight by zero point two. That would be zero uh, point. That would be sixteen kgs, right? No, that would be forty kg. Because zero point, it we multiply by ten, so it would be eighty by two. That would be forty kgs, right? So A's value is forty kg. So uh, when in original price A can buy forty kg of rice. So what is the price of one kg? It would be hundred by forty. That would be two point five, right? If you have not understood in the first attempt, then you can again pause the video and you can again see it. Then hopefully you will get to know. Otherwise, you can also ask me in the doubt section. Okay. Now let us move to the next question. In a, uh, it is also a very common question, and many a times they ask you in the percentage uh, questions this type of question. Okay. In a class, fifteen percent students failed in science, twenty five percent failed in maths, and ten percent failed in both. How much percent of students passed in both? So, fifteen percent failed in science and twenty-five percent failed in maths. And there are some students who have failed in both. So, it uh, that is ten percent. So, we have to minus ten percent because collectively we have added it. That how much percent has failed in science and how much percent has failed in maths. So, we have to reduce by ten to get how much total percent have failed. So. Twenty-five plus forty minus ten, thirty. So, 
30 percentage of students have failed okay uh, in any of the subjects so how much percent of students passed in both so 70 percent of the students have passed in both okay hope you have understood now this is again a previous year question 20 percent of this 220 percent of 40 minus 10 into 6 by 3 percentage of 500 what percent of 500 so you have to find it so 20 percent of means 20 by 100 okay it would be 220 by 40 we have to apply the board mass rule 10 into 6 divided by 3 this would occur first because division is done first 6 by 3 is 2 so minus 10 into 2 is 20 right percentage of 500 okay 20 by 100 if we do this 0 0 cut we are cut okay 22 into 4 it would be 88 88 minus 20 88 minus 20 would be 68 68 percentage of 500 so it will again be 100 of 500 right so 0 0 cut from here 1 0 will go from here okay 5 2 is 10 it will again cut 2 2 cut so remain will be 68 so the answer would be 68 percent or 68 the answer would be 68 right okay so let us move to the next question i think percentage is over now this all are the percentage questions and we have we try to cover as more many concepts as we can cover in percentage hope you will get common questions from this type of questions only and again we will share more practice questions so now we are moving to hcf and lcm hcf and lcm is a very important topic and you can usually see one to two questions for hcf and lcm okay uh, there are some concepts present in hcf and lcm so while doing the questions i will discuss the concepts okay so we have to find lcm of 36 by 225 48 by 150 72 by 65 so when there is both numerator and denominator present okay that is it if it is in fraction then lcm would be lcm of numerator by hcf of denominator when there is fraction and if we have to find hcf then just opposite we have we will do hcf of numerator by lcm of denominator okay remember it so here we have to find lcm of this so we will find lcm of 36 48 and 72 and we will find hcf of 225 150 and 65 that is the denominator so i think most of you know how to find the lcm in lcm what we do we divide all the numbers until all of them becomes one okay and then we will multiply the numbers which are left okay so that uh, all can be divided by six i think yes six it will remains eight and six twelve so. then we can reduce again by six it will be one it would become eight it would become two and then from eight so we will reduce it as far as possible so now multiply the leftover part that is 6 into 6 into 2 into 4 what it becomes 6 is a 36 okay 36 into 2 72 okay 72 into 4 uh, i think i have done some mistakes 6 6 is a 36 6 8 is a 48 6 12 is a 6 1 is a 6 6 8 is a uh, 6 2 is a 12 then 2 uh, it would become 1 okay so 6 6 is a 36 36 into 2 72 mm, 6 1 is 6 okay 6 2 is a 12 uh, just a minute 6 6 is a 6 6 is a 36 6 8 is a 48 6 12 is a 72 right no uh, 
सिक्स ट्वेल्व जो सेवेंटी टू यस राइट सिक्स वन जो सिक्स इट वुड रिमेन एज नो आई थिंक ओके दिस इज राइट देन इफ यू डू इट बाई टू ओके वी हैव डन राइट सो सिक्स सिक्स जो थर्टी सिक्स इंटू टू सेवेंटी टू तो सेवेंटी टू इंटू फोर फोर टू ज एट सेवन फोर ज ट्वेंटी एट सो इट विल कम एज टू एट्टी एट ओके एंड देन वी हैव टू फाइंड द एच सी एफ ऑफ टू हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी फाइव वन फिफ्टी सिक्सटी फाइव इन एच सी एफ इट इज अ ऑपोजिट वी विल फाइंड अप टू दे आर कॉमन इन एवरी वन ऑफ दम इन एवरी वन ऑफ द नंबर्स ओके सो बाय फाइव वी कैन डू इट इट इज फोर्टी फाइव इट इज थर्टी इट इज थर्टीन ओके वी कैन नॉट फाइंड एनी कॉमन नंबर बिटवीन फोर्टी फाइव थर्टी एंड थर्टीन बिकॉज दे आर को रिलेटिवली प्राइम एमंग दैम सो अवर एस सी एफ वुड बी फाइव सो वाट विल बी अवर एंसर टू एट्टी एट बाय फाइव राइट ओके नाउ वाट ग्रेटेस्ट नंबर डिवाइड सेवेंटीन फोर्टी टू एंड नाइन्टी थ्री एंड लीव रिमेंडर्स फोर्टीन थर्टीन एंड फिफ्टीन रेस्पेक्टिवली सो एज इट इज गिवेन वी हैव टू फाइंड ग्रेटेस्ट नंबर सो वी हैव टू डू एच सी एफ बिकॉज एच सी एफ इज ऑल्सो नोन एज ग्रेटेड ग्रेटेस्ट कॉमन डिवाइजर सो वेन एवर यू सी ग्रेटेस्ट नंबर देन ग्रेटेस्ट इज रिटर्न यू विल डू एच सी एफ ओके सो टू डू दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन देर इज अ ट्रिक एज इट इज गिवेन लीव रिमेंडर फोर थ्री एंड फिफ्टीन वी हैव टू सब्सट्रैक्ट एट फर्स्ट सेवेंटीन माइनस फोर इज थर्टीन फोर्टी टू माइनस थ्री इज थर्टी नाइन एंड नाइन्टी थ्री माइनस फिफ्टीन इज सेवेंटी एट नाउ वी विल फाइंड द एल सी एम सॉरी नाउ वी विल फाइंड द एच सी एफ सो वी कैन फाइंड इट लाइक दिस थर्टीन थर्टी नाइन सेवेंटी एट वाट वी विल गेट वन हेयर वी विल गेट थ्री and here we will get 6 so we cannot find any common number between 1 3 and 6 okay so 13 would be our it's safe and our answer okay now which least number whenever it is give saying least then we have to do lcm when divided by 20 14 36 36 leave remainders 13 41 and 29 respectively okay you can see the difference between 30 and 27 Again, difference between forty-one and forty-eight is seven, and twenty-nine and thirty-six difference is seven. So, how to solve this type of question? First, we will find LCM of twenty-eight, forty-eight, twenty, fourteen, and thirty-six. So, what would be the LCM? If we first take four, then it would be uh, five. Okay, it would be twelve. It would be nine. Then, if we take three. It would be remain as five. It would be four. Uh, it would be three. So no common more present. So we can multiply four into three. Is four into three is twelve. Twelve five is a sixty. Sixty four is a two forty. Two forty into three. Uh, two forty into three is seven twenty. Can we find any more common? Uh, just let me check. Four five is a twenty. Okay, four five is a, now. It is right. So it would be seven twenty. At last, as seven is the uh, common thing left between the remainders and the number, so we have to at last we have to subtract it by seven. So our answer would be seven one three. So first, if this type of question is present, first we will find the LCM, and after that we will subtract the difference between the numbers and the remainders. Hope you have understood. Okay. Now let us move to the next question. Okay, which least number when divided by thirty six, twenty four, and sixteen leaves eleven as remainder in each case? So what we have to do as least number is there? We have to find LCM. So first we have to find the LCM between thirty six, twenty four, and sixteen. Okay, what it would be? Six six the thirty six, six four the twenty four. Uh, sorry, thirty six, twenty four, and sixteen. Okay. Let us do it first by six. Six six is a thirty-six. Six four is a twenty-four, and we cannot divide by sixteen. Now, if we take two, it would be three. It would be, it would sorry, it would be three. It would be eight. Then again by two, three would remain as one. Now it would be four. So six into two, twelve. Twelve into two, twenty-four. 
24 into 3 24 into or we can do 24 into 12 right because 4 into 3 is 12 so 24 into 12 2 4 is the 2 into 4 8 48 24 8 8 uh, 2 so it would become 288 so 288 plus 11 at last we have to add the remainder part so it would become 299 let us again check if we have done right or wrong 6 6 is 36 6 4 is 24 16 would remain as such 2 3 is 6 2 2 is 4 2 8 is 16 okay 2 it would be 1 2 4 is 8 so 4 3 is 12 uh, 24 24 into 2 48 48 into 6 48 into 6 it would become 6 8 is 48 6 4 is a 24 28 it would come as 288 so 288 plus 11 your answer would be 299 so whenever it is given leaves 11 as remainder in each case so we have to add it at last okay so it could come 299 you can uh, check the calculation uh, there might be some mistake in calculation but the process is this so remember the process and try to avoid the wrong calculation or silly mistake in exam okay uh, now it is given hcf and lcm of two numbers is 8 and 96 sum of those numbers is 56 find sum of their reciprocal okay so there is a concept we know hcf into lcm is equal to multiplication of two numbers that is n1 and n2 if there are two numbers the multiplication of hcm and lcm would be the multiplication of n1 and n2 that is n1 into n2 is equal to 8 into 96 and their sum is also given n1 plus n2 is 56 right find sum of the reciprocal we have to find the sum of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 if we take remainder n1 n2 and n2 plus n1 so both the values we know n2 plus n1 is 56 and n1 n2 is 8 into 96 so 8 7 is a 56 your answer would be 7 by 96 hope you have understood now which largest number will divide 47 35 and 27 leaving same remainder what will be the common remainder okay we have to find the common remainder and largest number it means we have to do GCD or HCF. Okay, just a minute. Okay, let us uh, how to solve this type of question. We have to first subtract all of the numbers among themselves, neglecting the negative sign. So do it. 47 minus 35. What it would be 12 then do 35 minus 27 what it would become 8 then 27 minus 47 what we will receive 20 so the numbers we get 12 8 and 20 now find the hcf of them what would be the hcf 4 3 is a 2 5 so the hcf would be 4 now we have to div uh, divide all the numbers that is present 47 35 and 27 by 4 if we divide 47 by 4, we will have remainder as 3. If we divide 35 by 4, again remainder would be 3. And if we divide 27 by 4, again we will have remainder as 3. So what would be the common remainder? Common remainder is 3. That would be our answer. So what is the process? First, we have to subtract all the numbers among themselves, neglecting the negative sign. We are getting 12, 8 and 20. Then uh, we will divide it by 4 because uh, then we will uh, find the hcf and we are finding the hcf as 4 after that the whatever hcf we are getting with that hcf we will divide all the numbers and we will find the common remainder right hope you have understood now let us move to the next questions okay this is the previous year question if x minus 4 is hcf of x square minus 8x plus 15 and x square minus kx minus 1 then what is k 
so if we divide by x minus 4 this numbers and this number that is x minus 4 is the hcf so if we divide them we will get uh, remainder as 0 we will get remainder 0 for both the cases so we can equate it x square minus 8x plus 15 should be x square minus kx minus 1 put the value of x as 4 so we can put it 16 minus 8 4 is the 32 plus 15 we can again 16 minus 4x minus 1 if we solve this 16 plus 15 31 minus 32 31 minus that minus 1 it would be 15 minus 4x so minus 4x would become minus 16 so x would become 4 so 4 is the answer so value of k is 4 now there are three equilateral triangles with sides 114 centimeters 76 centimeter and 152 centimeter what maximum size scale can measure them exactly so whenever it is given maximum or highest we know what we have to do we have to do it hcf even maximum uh, if the maximum word is not given also we have to find a common scale that would be divide all the triangles to find the common scale we will find a scale which height is less than all of them so find a less height that is we have to find a factor right and where we get factors in hcf so even if the maximum word is not written by logic you can think what we have to find hcf or lcm right 114 76 152 so let us do the hcf of 114 76 and 52 right okay mm. so if we divide by 2 what we will get 57 then 38 then 76 now if we do it by 19 we'll get 3 2 4 we cannot uh, find anything common between them so our hcf would be 38 or the common maximum size scale would be of 38 centimeter right okay five clocks rings automatically at intervals 12 minutes 8 minutes 3 minutes 4 minutes and 10 minutes in eight hours how many times they ring together okay now how we will decide we have to find the hcf or lcm see we have to decide in how many after how many intervals they will again ring together so the number we will get would be more than all of the numbers that is it would be multiple of all the numbers and lcm means multiple so we have to find lcm and not the factors right whenever we have to find a thing that is less than all of the numbers that is we have to find the factors then we will do hcf whenever we have to find a thing that will be more than all of the numbers okay that would be multiple then we have to find the lcm like this way we can do it or we can assume or we can think what we have to find lcm or lcm hcf okay now find the lcm 12 8 3 4 and 10 if it by 2 it would be 6 it would be 4 it would be 3 it would be 2 it would be 5 then again by 2 it would be 3 it would be 2 it will uh, it would be 3 only it would be 1 it would be 5 then by 3 1 2 1 1 5 so we cannot find anything common now so 2 into 2 4 4 into 3 12 24 24 into 5 120 so at after every 120 minutes they will ring together so 120 minutes mean 2 hours so in 8 hours it would it will ring simultaneously or ring 4 times so it would be your answer hope you have understood so that is all from hcf and lcm now we will move to our final topic of the day that would be problem on ages okay these are the very easy question and you can generally see at least one question zero to one question in your exam okay so they are very easy let us do it so r after 15 years will be five times his age five years back 
what is the present age of raju after 15 years let us uh, think of the current age as x so after 15 years his age would be 5 times his age 5 years back that is x minus 5 right so we have to solve the equation and just so x is equal to 15 5x minus 25 right so if you solve this 5 4x would be 25 40 so x would become 10 so his current age is 10 years right okay now 10 years ago p was half of q in age 10 years ago p was half of q if the ratio of present age is 3 is to 4 what is the total age of their present age total of their present age so 10 years ago the ratio was 1 is to 2 now their ratio is 3 is to 4 so we can write this 3 by 4 plus uh, the ratio of the present age minus 10 minus 10 is 1 by 2 so we have to just cross multiply and solve it so we can do 6x minus 20 is equal to 4x minus 10 so it would become 6x minus 4x 2x is equal to um, minus 20 plus 20 therefore x would become 5 right so ratio of their percentage is 3 is to 4 so their total is 7 7 into 5 so total of their present age is uh, 35 uh, have I have I done any mistake no so 7x it would be 35 would be our answer again if we uh, see x is equal to 5 so we have to find the total of their present age so 3 is to 4 so total is 7 3 plus 4 7 so 7 into 5 we have got as x so 7 into 5 35 okay the ages of a and b is in the ratio 60 to 7 after 6 years ratio becomes 15 into 7 find the present age of a so it is quite similar to the previous question so the ages of a is to be the ratio 6x consider it as x the ratio after 6 years plus 6 okay plus 6 it would become 15 by 17 so you have to just solve this if you solve this you will get x as 4 then we have to find the present age of a okay so a is in the ratio 6 so what would the present age of a 6 into 4 it would be 24 years right okay so s is younger than r by 7 years if the ratio of their ages is 7 is to 9 find the age of s so difference between their ratio is what 2 and difference between their age is 7 so we can equate it so 2 ratio difference is 7 so what we want to find the age of s so age is 7 so 1 means 7 by 2 so 7 means 7 into 7 by 2 that is 49 by 2 right easy or his age is 24.5 now the last question the sum of ages of a and b is 81 ratio is 4 is to 5 find the present age of a and b okay so ratio is 4 is to 5 so if we sum it it would be 9 right the sum of ages of a and b is 81 so 9 is 81 1 is 9 so 4 4 means 9 4 is a 36 5 means 9 5 is a uh, 45 so the present age of a is 36 present age of b is 35 so that is all for today if you have any doubt please let me know in the doubt section and please share it among your friends and if you like the course also let me know that's all for today i will come up with more topic videos in the 